Now let's turn on the device so you can see how it provides safe pacing support in both the atrium and ventricle with just these three control dials. Great. Press and hold the on-off key momentarily to turn on the pacemaker. When the device turns on, the backlight of the lower screen illuminates and a self-test is initiated. How do I know that the self-test is completed? Once the self-test is completed, the mode selection screen is displayed on the lower screen. Great, I see that it's ready to pace at 80 beats per minute and 10 milliamps for both the atrium and the ventricle. That's correct. These are the nominal settings at power on. What are the flashing lights for? The pacing and sensing status bar indicators identify which chambers the 5392 is currently set to pace and or sense, atrium or ventricle. Notice there are lights for the atrium and lights for the ventricle. The green LED indicator flashes each time the temporary pacemaker delivers a pacing pulse. The blue LED indicator lights up for intrinsic sensed events. Do the pace and the sense LEDs indicate actual temporary pacemaker interaction with the heart? No, the pace and sense LEDs next to the A and V chamber indicators show delivery of a pacing pulse or a sensed event. The LEDs flash when the pacing or sensing events occur. Remember I said you can deliver dual chamber pacing with just three control dials? Yes, the dials change the rate and the atrial and ventricular outputs. Right. Let's change the rate first. Why don't you try? Simply turn the top dial to the desired setting. To increase the rate, turn the dial clockwise. I like how responsive the knobs are when turning. Also, notice the setting is displayed both numerically and graphically. That's a nice feature. I can see at a glance when the rate is in the high range and that it goes up to 200 beats per minute. That would be very useful with a pediatric patient. Mm, you're right. Now, to decrease the rate, turn the dial counterclockwise. I do like how easy it is to read the numbers. They're really large and clear. And I also like the scale next to each dial showing where the parameters is set within the available range. This next dial is for setting the atrial output? Yes, and the third dial is for setting the ventricular output. Okay, now that I have changed the rate and the outputs, is there a way to lock them so that they don't get changed accidentally? Of course. The device will automatically lock in the selected settings 60 seconds after the last adjustment is made. Or to lock in the settings at any time, just press the lock unlock key. A lock indicator will appear when the lock takes effect. Try adjusting one of these three dials. Now the lock indicator is flashing a message that appears on the lower screen. Yes, this is the lock message and it flashes for approximately 30 seconds to indicate that you must press the lock button to unlock the device. Okay, I see that instruction on the lower screen. Mm -hmm. How can I unlock the device in a critical situation where time is of the essence? For instance, a loss of capture. You can unlock the device by pressing the DOO emergency key. Pressing emergency causes the device to immediately begin delivering high output asynchronous dual chamber pacing. So the device is now pacing both chambers at the maximum output settings and at the programmed rate. Emergency is the 15392 function that you can activate anytime, whether the device is on, off, unlocked, or locked. So if the device is off and I press emergency, what are the settings? Both the atrium and the ventricle are paced asynchronously at maximum outputs at a rate of 80 beats per minute. In addition, there is an asynchronous pacing message that appears in the lower screen. This will remain as long as the device is in emergency pacing mode. Great, but could I adjust the rate or the output if I needed to? Yes, just as we did before. So pressing the emergency really is a convenient way to quickly select asynchronous dual chamber pacing. Exactly. I like what I've seen so far. It's simple to use. Now how do I turn the device off? First, unlock the temporary pacemaker if it is locked. Now, press the on-off key once. Notice the temporary pacemaker shutdown message appears on the lower screen. 
Yes, I see the message on the lower screen. When you press the off key, you get a message that prompts you to press the enter key within five seconds to shut the pacemaker down, thus reducing the chance of inadvertently turning the device off. I really like the added safety feature. Tell me, is it possible to just pick a pacing mode and have the device deliver that therapy without having to make any other adjustments? Sure. The mode selection menu is displayed in the lower screen when the 5392 is turned on. So go ahead and turn the device back on. And remember, the current pacing mode is displayed in the lower left corner of the upper screen. I see. It automatically comes to the DDD mode. I like that. Mm -hmm.